Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Pokemon Challenge video. Playing through Pokemon Platinum as Zoe from the Sinnoh anime was insanely cool and definitely my best video I've done thus far. Today we're doing something that a lot of people want to see. That should be pretty fun. We're going to beat Pokemon Sword only using the Eeveelutions in battle. Obviously, yeah, you can do this. They're really powerful Pokemon and considered favorite Pokemon by a lot of people. So it's really awesome to showcase them. I'll be adding some extra rules to make this a really good challenge. As of right now, Eevee can evolve into eight different Pokemon, being Vaporeon, Jolteon, Flareon, Espeon and Umbreon, Glaceon and Leafeon, and then Sylveon. Let me know which one of them's your favorite down below. Mine's Jolteon. However, we can only carry six Pokemon, so we'll be dropping two of these and it hurt so much to do, trust me. I decided for this run to drop Leafeon and Espeon. I love them both, but the other six I just feel are more than enough. But to make things interesting, we're gonna be treating the majority of the game like a solo run. Before the Champion Cup, we're only allowed to use one Evolution per major battle, being against gym leaders and rival battles. And for Rahan, we're allowed to use two. Obviously, since it's a double battle. But once we beat him, we're going all out for the win. On top of this, we're not allowed to use any items in battle, of course, but held items and Pokeballs of any kind are fair game. And I must play unset the entire run. It won't matter until after Rahan, but then it'll definitely make a big difference. And another extra rule, we're not gonna be using Dynamax at all in this challenge. As always, if you enjoy the video, it'd be really awesome if you left a quick like down below and maybe even a nice comment like these guys. Thank you so much, Giselle, Dankit Bow, and Blue Thunder. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the challenge videos. With that being said, let's jump into this and beat Pokemon Sword using the Eeveelutions. Mine is Espeon and Leafeon. We begin our adventure as a young boy named Virgil. I choose Sobble as our starter Pokemon, since I can't recall a Sword and Shield challenge that we've done where Leon had Rillaboom. After getting the Pokedex, we open our PC and find our team inside. Kuni the Vaporeon, Miki the Jolteon, Naoko the Flareon, Zuki the Umbreon, Sayo the Glaceon, and Sakura the Sylveon. All named after the Kimono Sisters. Sorry, Espeon and Leafeon fans. I really wish we could carry eight Pokemon. For our first rival battle with Hop while we have the Evolutions, I choose Naoko, our Flareon, to fight him. This was to start getting her ahead of the others since she is by far the star for our first gym. But because of his score bunny, I make sure to use Kuni, our Vaporeon, for him next time. And of course, I choose our Umbreon Zuki for Bead. He'll be my Pokemon for bead all the way until the finals. So now that we've reached her field, it's time for our first gym challenge versus the grass gym leader, Milo. My pick for this gym is Naoko, our Flareon. I taught her protect and gave her the leftovers. This lets her defeat his Gossifleur without sustaining any damage and also lets her easily stall out his ace Eldegoss' Dynamax, being able to keep enough health to easily take him down. There's our grass badge, one down, Seven to go. Before we can make our way to Holberry, however, we have another rival battle with Hop. Just like before, I lead with Cooney, and he actually almost beat us. But he sure is dumb for being the unbeatable champion's brother. Let's just call it Growing Pains. He gets better later, as always. We then grab the always convenient Absorb Bulb and enter Holberry, home of our second gym challenge versus the water gym leader, Nessa. I initially lead with Miki, our Jolteon, for this. Why wouldn't I? At first glance, he is the best choice, but her ace Dynamax Dreadnought takes him out really easily. We'd need good luck with Thunder Wave to make it out of this easily. But then I remember Milo gave us the TM for Magical Leaf. Our Sylveon Sakura can learn that. It's four times super effective and a lot stronger than Thundershock. She's also a lot more bulky than Jolteon, allowing for her to take two hits from Dreadnought since she's slower than it two-shotting it with Magical Leaf, thanks to the Absorb Bulb. There's the Water Badge! Two down, six more to go. Once again, Bead is no match for our Dark-type coverage in the form of Zuki, making it time for Marnie. And Sakura is the perfect match for her as of right now. Krogunk's a bit scary, but Disarming Voice is perfect for her Scraggy and more Pico. And our Vaporeon Kuni learned Water Pulse during the battle. 
which is perfect timing for the upcoming gym versus the fire gym leader Kabu. But unfortunately, Water Pulse isn't gonna be enough. His lead Ninetales and his Arcanine outspeed Cooney, and Will-O-Wisp does a massive amount of damage in that time. And on top of that, Water Pulse doesn't even do over half to his ace, Gigantamax Centiscorch, dropping us really quickly. We need an upgrade to Water Pulse to stand a chance, so I head over to the wild area and get the TR for Surf, likely his best move the rest of the game. And with the Mystic Water in hand, he's able to one-shot both Ninetales and Arcanine, with Ninetales thankfully missing its Will-O-Wisp. And Surf does over half to Senta Scorch, and he manages to take the G-Max Sentaferno really well, finishing it off the next turn. There's the Fire Badge! Three down, only five more to go. Insto on side, I change my strategy up and fight Hop with our Jolteon Miki, since he leads with a Cramorant. And during the battle, our Sylveon learned Draining Kiss. Once again, perfect timing for the upcoming gym. Versus the fighting gym leader, B. I also taught her the TM for Charm and Protect, giving her the leftovers. By using Charm to soften up the Pokemon I can't one-shot, and by using Protect whenever I need, I can get plenty of hit points back in time for her ace, Gigantamax Machamp. It does a ton of damage to us and lowers our speed with Max Strike. But Charm softens it up enough for Sakura to outlast and outplay her for our fourth badge. There's the fighting badge! Four down, only four more to go. Zuki assures we defeat Bead as usual, and then we ride on over to Balloonlia for our next gym challenge, versus the fairy gym leader Opal. This is our first gym where we don't have the ability to have the type advantage. No such thing as a Toxion or a Metalion. Yet. But because she's so generous with the stat boosts she gives, just powering through her with Vaporeon was enough, with even her Gigantamaxed Alchemy hardly doing anything to him. There's the Fairy Badge! Five down, only three to go. And here is the point of the game where Hop starts to get really difficult in a challenge run. His team is really strong at this point in the game, and I can only use one Pokemon per major battle. This actually took me almost three hours. And by far, my best Pokemon for this fight was Zuki, my Umbreon. Umbreon has the perfect amount of bulk and recovery options in Moonlight and Rest. And if he holds the Rocky Helmet, he can deal with Hop's most threatening Pokemon in Snorlax really well. I almost had him, but his Snorlax got a critical hit on me, causing his final Pokemon, Boltund, to be able to finish Zuki off. I never got that close to beating him again. I knew my best course of action was to go train, doing a few raids, getting everyone a bit closer to level 40. I also got the TR for Dazzling Gleam in this time, which is a great move for our Sylveon Sakura. Eventually, Zuki is able to get everything to go just right to finally beat Ha. The few extra levels was what we needed, and of course, the better luck. Making it time for our sixth gym challenge versus the Rock Gym Leader, Gordy. And this was the perfect break I needed after that horrendous battle with Hop, as Cooney, our Vaporeon, made an absolute fool of Gordy, with him having his shell-smashing Barbarical use Razor Shell on him. He has Water Absorb Bud. You think a Gym Leader would know better? That's why your mom's a better Gym Leader. Hashtag Melanie Gang. No, cut that, please, cut that, that's awful, that's cringe. I like Melanie, okay? To stop. And apart from Shuckle, he goes on to one-shot the rest of his team. There's the Rock Badge! Six down, only two to go. And once again, we have another incredibly difficult battle against Hop. Usually this battle is really hard because of the hail. And since we've never really used Sio or Glaceon, I think now's the time. The issue is his Cinderace. If it hits Pyro Ball, it'll one-shot him without question. But because of his ability Snow Cloak, he's got a pretty good chance to dodge it. This and I taught him Work Up and Blizzard, so he can ensure a one-shot on it. Eventually, he manages to set up to plus six against his double and sweep his entire team with Blizzard. Sakura then learns to move Psych Up, and I absolutely love this move. So I put it to use against our next fight with Marnie, even though we probably didn't need to. Her Lybird likes to use Nasty Plot, so I psych up and copy that, sweeping her down with Training Kiss and Dazzling Gleam. And our next gym challenge versus her brother Piers, the Dark-type gym leader. 
is essentially the same, minus the stealing of a nasty plot. Easily slaying his entire team with the power of fairy. There's the dark badge! Seven down! Only one more to go! And as always, it's immediately time for our eighth gym challenge versus the dragon gym leader, Rahan, in a double battle. I choose Sakura and Sayo as my duo for this fight, but they're both weak to Duraludon, and even his Flygon has Steel Wing, which I don't recall ever seeing before. They aren't strong enough to do this as they currently stand, so I go grab some items to help out. In the Choice Specs and the Choice Scarf. By giving the Choice Scarf to Sakura, she can outspeed and one-shot Flygon. And with the specs on Sayo, he can deal enough damage to one-shot both Gigalith and Sandaconda with a single blizzard, with the help from Sakura. And with them both still standing strong, they are easily able to defeat Duraludon. Two versus one. There's the Dragon Badge! All eight gym badges of the Gala region are now ours. It is time to head to Winden! Great work, you six, working by yourselves for this adventure. But now, it's time to go all out and become the champion. Even with the ability to use everybody unlocked, Sakura is all we needed for Marnie, sweeping her easily with the choice specs. But the final match with Hop is a different story. He's as difficult as ever. But shockingly, Kuni our Vaporeon is able to defeat all of his Pokemon, except for his final Pokemon in his ace, Dynamax Cinderace. And this thing goes on a rampage, stomping our team down. But Naoko is able to come in and finish him off. Time for Oleana. Kuni takes down her Frostlass, Sarina, and Salazzle. But then I need Miki, our Jolteon, for my Lodic. Her ace, Gigantamax Garboder, easily takes Miki out right after. But Naoko comes in, nuking it with a Flare Blitz. It survives with just a sliver, taking Naoko out with a Max Rockfall, summoning the Sandstorm. In turn, taking itself out. I've never seen the trash take itself out before. That sounds wonderful. Now, just the finals and rows stand between us and the unbeatable champion. Let's do this. First up is Bead. He's now a fairy type user, so our Umbreon is gonna sit this one out. I lead with Cooney and take out his Mawile with Surf to prepare for a fun strategy. I gave the choice band to Naoko and deleted all of her moves except for last resort, but it failed. Nice. I didn't realize I needed to have another move to use. There goes that strategy. Regardless, it was pretty funny. And Sakura, our MVP by a mile, is able to easily take Bead down. He should have used the Sylveon. Next up is Nessa, and our Jolteon Miki gets some time to shine. Haven't had much of a use for him, unfortunately. Jolteon's my favorite evolution too, so it's pretty sad. But either way, he sweeps Nessa with ease. And Sakura does the same to B, except for her Machamp, since she was paralyzed earlier in the fight. And she also helps us defeat the majority of Rahan's team as well, needing help from Sayo and Miki for Duraludon. I reteach Flare Blitz to Naoko for Chairman Rose, and she tears through his Escavalier and Kling Klang before getting really weak. I swap her for Sayo and Sakura to deal with Frothorn. And as Sakura falls to his ace, Naoko comes back in and takes herself and the Gigantamax Copperaja down. Making it time for the unbeatable champion of the Galar region versus the Evolution team with an Espeon and Leafeon somewhere out there cheering us on. I lead with Naoko against his Age of Slash and one Flare Blitz takes it out with ease. Haxorus is next up and Earthquake takes Naoko out of here quickly. I send in Sakura and she avoids an Iron Tail, lucky, with Moonblast finishing Haxorus off and Rhyperior right after. Rillaboom survives, however, and manages to get an Endeavor off, taking Sakura down really low. This causes her to go down to Dragapult and Sayo, our Glaceon, does as well. I send Zuki our Umbreon out to finish the hit on Dragapult and his final Pokemon, his ace, his pride and joy, Gigantamax Charizard comes out. Zuki takes a hit, confusing it with Confused Ray, and goes down the next turn, with Miki, our Jolteon, coming out next. Charizard's faster than him, but hurts itself in confusion, getting blasted by a discharge. Charizard shrinks back down and hits through confusion, missing Fire Blast, as one final discharge finishes this unbeatable champion off. There we have it. We just beat Pokemon Sword, only using the Evolutions in battle. In Sylveon, Jolteon, Vaporeon, 
Flareon, Glaceon, and Umbreon. And we have won this game! Wow, this was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Adding that rule where I could only use one Pokemon per major battle made this what would have been an insanely easy run as difficult as any other solo run, since it kind of was until the Champions Cup. I upload a Pokemon Challenge video just like this one every single weekend on Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and maybe even sometimes other days too, just like this one. So if you haven't done so already and want to see more like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for more. And of course, leaving a like down below and a nice comment before you leave here today also goes a really long way to supporting the channel and helping me as a creator grow, and it just makes my day seeing from a new face every single time I upload a new video. So who knows, maybe I'll even feature your comment in a future Pokemon challenge run of mine. And if you have other Pokemon challenge suggestions you'd like to see me do, leave those down below as well. I highly recommend checking out the Pokemon Platinum run I just did where I played through a Zoe from the Sinnoh anime. It's by far the best video I've uploaded to the channel thus far. Or you can just check out the playlist containing them all that I've done so far to pick one out for yourselves. You can find a link to both of those things over here. With that being said, I really do hope you guys enjoyed this challenge run, as always, and hopefully I'll get to see you next time for another Pokemon challenge run. Until then, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching!